So obviously, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm just a little. So within that time, we're at 95.2 or 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Hello all. So like all good men, I decided instead of finishing off the trailer, putting the siding on, I would uh, add some more. So I was on Amazon and I've ordered a couple things. So on both sides, we've got all this space. I'm gonna put two boxes. They're gonna be roughly 24 inches wide by 34 inches down uh, to the top of the wheel well. And roughly 10 inches out, uh, wheel well depth is 12. We're gonna go right at it now. I pre-cut some of the stuff. Uh, this was uh, primed, but uh, I don't know if it makes a difference with PL. Like I said, you never know. So everywhere that I'm gonna put it, just give it a quick, but the way I built the trailer and when I do the walk around is the two by twos that are on here, I went full size so that's an inch and a half all the way down to nothing to the front so when the trailer's parked and we're camping, uh, when we're level it's actually going to take the water from the front or from the back, sorry, near the galley to the front. Let's kind of get with it. Use the PL, this stuff's incredible. Hate working with it, uh, but it does a heck of a job. Kind of regular wood screws. So like I said, it's one of those feel things, but I've been using that thing for a good decade. And hopefully you can see how straight that line is. So now I'll just go around, do the rest of them. I brought this one in a little bit because of the size of the, uh, the hinges that I'm using. I'll put some backing in here when I get to the corner. So obviously I'll get my hand saw to finish all that stuff up. But that's kind of where we're at. We're gonna cut the door open and get this thing going. I'm gonna mark them and pre-drill. And the reason I do this is if you do it now, like I said, if you do it now and mount your hinges, the door will stay square. I don't even know what these are called, if somebody can kind of let me know, but I think plumbers use them. But it's just literally a hacksaw blade on a handle and they work really great for woodworking in the corners. 
just finishing them off and they're nice and smooth, no overcut. So like I said, I got pretty lucky when building the size of this box. And believe it or not, I did not have the table that I was going to put in there. I did know the dimensions of the instant hot water tank. And I went out and, well, I didn't go out. I went on to good old Amazon and I bought this Lippert Flowmax water pump. So I don't have a water pump for this unit yet. And uh, so it's 3.3 gallons per minute so it says it comes with the accessories and what I like it has the strainer built in so on the bottom of the strainer I got 90 bucks into this ship uh, one day or same day sorry so that's that this unit here was $89.99 so I wanted to test the cheapest one they had the only change I did it doesn't have it's so cheap all this literally is, is plastic with some holes drilled in it. So you can run the pump and it keeps going, but no way to shut it off. So I had this PEX, half inch PEX uh, fitting on off. So that's off and really easy. So I have done that off camera. So now with the fitting, it's like uh, 249. So now I'm up to about 9250 in parts. Okay, so the funny thing about this is I had it running a little bit and I'll get it going for you. What I want to do is check out how fast the water heats up or what it heats up to. So the water I'm using right now is chilly 46.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 7.9 degrees Celsius. Hopefully you can see that and I'm not too close. Okay, so that will probably simulate uh, winter time and then we'll see what we can get out of this back end. So when running these, what I read and what I've seen on, on uh, YouTube and stuff like that, start at the minimum. Uh, personally, because the water's so cold, this one has a summer and a winter. So it's kind of like an efficiency thing. If the water's already warm, keep it at summer but I'm gonna put it on winter because that's not warm water, straight from the tap, okay? And then the other thing is uh, how much water you allow come out is how hot this thing will get. And so I tested it a little bit and the funny thing is, and I'll show you a bit later, that the dial show, both dials show small dot, big dot. So the gas works, I've tried that, but the, the you get what you pay for the water flow is backwards. So I'll show you that a bit later. I'm rambling. So I'm gonna turn my gas on. Okay. And the cool thing is this little screen here lets you know when it fires up. Uh, I don't have an on off switch right now. Like I said, I'm just ghettoing it. So everything looks good. Oh, there is an on off switch under here. So that's not on yet. So I'm gonna flip that on automatically. So we instantly start getting hot water as soon as I hook this up. And let's see what happens. You can hear it clicking in. It's already ignited. And so now I'm gonna turn the temperature up to max. Now obviously I got a very low flow, but it's already hot or warm. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a quick check of where we're at, about 30 seconds in, too much. So within that time, we're at 95.2. Let's see how hot we can get this thing. So gas is up to max now, we're in a winter. Water temperature is at its lowest. Let's run it for about 30, 40 seconds. There, it kicked in that fast. I like that shut off feature. What do we get? Can we get close to 100? And look at that. So we're at a, oh, yeah, 100.2. So that's a comfortable shower. So I wanted to bring you all over here because it's pretty funny. So 
it shows that gas regulator high which works winter summer and then the flow which i obviously have at max but how am i going to do this with one hand hopefully i can do this from here you'll be able to see it so there's the flow and now i'm going to go back to this and turn it down and watch what happens So obviously, yeah, uh, <laughs> thumbs a little backwards, but it works, so at least it works. <laughs>